I know one thing, I'm not going to go quietly into the night if they come for my civil rights. And the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms is a civil right, and it is the civil right, right. that makes all the others possible, period. I think you're awesome. I feel like everyone out there, if you're watching or listening, you should just pause the video and just do a slow clap for Dr. Sebastian. That was so good. I mean, I didn't know whether to salute while you were talking. I didn't know. Is that Evan? No! No! This is nerve wracking. Wunderbar, 100% success rate. You foxy lady. Lock to the rear, strip magazine, finger or cycle, 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 then reload rack and fall. All right, that worked pretty darn well. Fight your own battles, Evan! Fight your own battles! You think you got him in this fight? Make him get him out of there! Greeting my friends, welcome back. Did you know that everything now is politics? Everyone's pissed and all that seems to exist is politics. And I myself, I don't want politics to rule my life, but because we're warrior poets, that means we are defenders and lovers of freedom. That's part of who we are. And that means we need to remain in the know. Even though politics is not going to dominate my life personally, I need to stay in the know. And it's for that reason where I lean into other people who are in the political realm. I want an insider's view of like what in the world is happening. Please discern all the stuff going on. I see different headlines from different news organizations, and it's just a huge divide from what I'm hearing. And so I want to be able to ask an insider. And so I have our good friend, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, PhD. He's a best-selling author multiple times over. He's a former strategist for the president of the United States, and he runs a national radio show with a couple million followers. Dr. Sebastian Gorka, welcome. Thank you kindly, John. It's great to be on your show for once. I know. Thank you so much for having me on yours. It was, it's been my turn, hasn't it? Uh, it has, and I've, I've waited a long time for this because I'm a huge fan of what you do, the new platform you've created with the Warrior Poet uh, Society's uh, network as well. And I, I just want to say this. I'm not a warrior. I've spent a lot of time with the guys at Bragg. I spent a little bit of time in the British uh, Army Reserves. But if you hadn't started something called the Warrior Poet Society, I would have started it because we dearly need it. Dear Lord, how this civilization needs it. So God bless you. More power to your elbow. And thank you for doing what you do every day. Well, listen, I've already we've already talked about this off camera. I'm going to tune you up. We're going to get you out to the range and run and gun some. I'm going to tune you up, man. And you're a gun guy. You're one of us. So I'm a massive gun guy. And I just, I, 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 you didn't rehearse this, but just this morning, I took my 21-year-old son, his best buddy. We went shooting and we took our Shadow Systems 9 mil with the hollow sun that you sent me. Yes, sir. Absolutely beautiful. They love the gun. I love it. You're a very, very gracious man. And, and can I just say something to, to your monologue or your little intro? Sure. I just, I just don't get it when I see these other gun. I'm a huge gun guy. You know, my father escaped a communist prison. I was taught to shoot as soon as I could pick up a gun. I cannot understand these YouTube channels where they, where they introduce the show and even the, the Chiron might say, we do guns, no politics. Excuse me? Are you awake? Do you have a pulse? Are you breathing? Yeah. Everything is politics today. Whether you want to go out to the bloody cinema, to the movie theater, is, is politics. So the idea that you could talk about guns or, or the warrior ethos without discussing politics is insane. So another reason why I'm a big fan. Yeah, everything is just getting eaten up by that thing, politics. So 
whatever becomes a political conversation is now politics, and it's erased our ability to talk about anything except the weather. Oh, wait, <laughs> global warming. We can't even talk about the weather. Are you kidding me? Right, right. It is insane. It doesn't matter. Pick any topic. It doesn't matter. We're going to have a great conversation and get to all kinds of stuff that I'm just personally interested in. I think a lot of our community is going to lean in and just learn from you as well. But I wanted to start off by the nature of where everyone gets their information. I feel like I have to always be choosing between uh, getting bad information or getting no information. I've got to choose between those two because I'll look at CNN and or or Fox News, and Fox News is, in my estimation, taking a big step down uh, or away from us. Uh, there's like Newsmax and Daily Wire, or then there's just whatever social media Instagram feeds you. I feel like I can know exactly what a person thinks in their politics by just cutting off the conversation and be like, whoa, 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 don't tell me what you think. Tell me where you get your news. And wherever and whatever they answer that question with, where do you get your news? I'll fill in and tell you what you what you think. <laughs> Am I is is my little guess there? Is my noticing? Is that right? And what do we do about that? Yeah, it's it's incredibly true. It's sadly true. Let, let me start with with the bugbear I have on on my radio show, America First. Uh, it is one of the most, the left's going to be the left, and the left have be, have become radical. When you saw the invocation of the new Congress two days ago, where the quote-unquote reverend said, amen, a women at the end, you, you realize th th this is a radicalized part. They have no idea what the word amen even means, but they have to do some kind of uh, identity politics with a blessing. So, so the left is the left, we get it. But when conservatives um, don't rely on accurate information, and when they fall into these incredibly damaging conspiracy theories, when, when you've got lawyers you know, posting on Twitter three days ago, and, and if Pence doesn't save the election, he's going to be arrested, and there's going to be a firing squad. And, and you go, guys, are you on crack? Well, please, just look for information that isn't from a grifter or an insane person. One of the most popular articles we have ever posted on our website or at sebgorka.com, that's the, the, um, the radio show's website, is we sat down and we took the time, my whole team, and we listed the 14 most reliable news sites. And, and people always ask me, where, where can I get information? I said, look, it's very easy. You look at institutions, and in fact, it's better to look at individuals inside institutions that have a proven track record. What have they said over the last year, over the last five years? Have they screwed up again and again and again? Were they perpetrators of the Russia hoax? Are they people who said hydroxychloroquine may have worked for 50 years to stop malaria in, in Africa and our, our troops use it around the world? But now, now it's a dangerous drug and you shouldn't use it if you're sick. If they're saying stuff like that, they're not purveyors of information. They are activists and they're propagandists. So first things first. But when you're thinking of reposting something and there's no source or it's from my brother's best friend's niece works at the Department of Homeland Security and they say that FEMA is uh, labor camps for conservatives, you go, hang on, just stop, count to 10, take a deep breath and be prudent it's an important, you know, there's some key virtues. Courage is the most important, but prudence and circumspection are something that is so lacking today. It was, uh, who was it? Was it, was it um, I think it was Mark Twain who said, he who doesn't read the newspapers is uninformed. He who reads the newspapers is misinformed. That's right. Be, be your own arbiter and use, apply common sense because there is so much garbage out there. And sadly, the internet has just made it worse. So, sorry, sorry, for the, sorry for the rant, that's my Belgian shepherd. Somebody's just come to the front door. But, but this topic is, is one that's so crucial, John. Right. So what I want to do for all of our viewers is provide a link to that article that you've written, the 14 most trusted. But with in case they're not going to rush the door, can you rattle off a few? And I'm going to go ahead and put yeah. America first, your national radio show, just as number one. So you can fill in number two anywhere down there. How about that? All right. So, so um, first things first, I love talk radio and I get most of my 
information from talk radio, but only from trusted individuals, the big names who've been doing it for 30, 40 years. So my colleague at Salem, you know, Dennis Prager, whether it's a Larry Elder, whether it's the great Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, these are people who have demonstrated over decades that they are reliable. So talk radio for me is number one. Social media, eh, Twitter, Facebook, they're kind of little clicks, they're kind of echo chambers. When it comes to reliable sites, Breitbart, I used to be their national security editor, Breitbart.com, is number one. Then you have things like The Federalist, an incredible, if you want longer analyses, thefederalist.com, superlative, run by Ben Dominich and Sean Davis, regular guests on my show. Then The Daily Wire, The Daily Caller. These are the big ones that I would recommend. Breitbart.com, thefederalist.com, Daily Wire, uh, uh, and Daily Caller. But but I'll, I'll send you the link. Check them out. And these are the four, 14 sites I, I, I'm not, I don't have any interest in them financially, but these are the ones I would put my reputation on because they have proven to me that they are in it for truth. Not you know, uh, your truth or their truth, but the truth, because there only is one truth. Absolutely. Thanks. And I want to keep it. Yeah, every time you mention something, it makes me want to go off on a little tear of like, yes, there's different perspectives, but there's only one capital T truth, and that's a different thing. And if you contradict that, well, now you're now you're fighting with the laws of logic. And I can't believe anyone could even graduate middle school without understanding the logical fallacy that they're tripping in. As soon as you say we have different contradictory truths that are both true. There's no, what else are you going to do in education now? What in the world, uh, if you throw out the laws of logic, which all of our education is built on, what's left? And uh, that's so, caused me to lose confidence in uh, academia, like colleges and univer liberal arts schools specifically. Yeah. Let me show, tell you a very short story. So Please. my daughter was at one of the most prestigious um, private schools in DC, uh, in the high school. And uh, every uh, Tuesday they had a, they didn't call it a service because it was in a cathedral, but that would have been too, I don't know, provocative to call it a service. So they had a lecture in the cathedral, the National Cathedral, with all the girls, girls' school, young girls from 10 to 18. And one of the teachers gave a quote unquote lecture or sermon about her sexuality as a lesbian to girls who are as young as 10 in the cathedral and said, basically, it's good to explore your sexuality. Now, when I heard this from my 16-year-old daughter, I, I flipped. Yeah. Um, I I'm a conservative. I, I believe man is man, woman is woman. There is a reason why the God created us the, the way he created us. And so I took it upon myself to go and see the principal. And my, my wife read me the right act. She said, behave, behave in there. And I did, and I, I, I controlled myself, and I had another teacher as a witness. And I, all I said to her was the following. It's one of the most prestigious schools in D.C. or in America. Uh, I heard about this lecture where one of your teachers talked about how young girls should explore their sexuality and, uh, you know, homosexuality is something they should look into. Would you, all I said was, John, would you be interested in having another guest lecturer talk about traditional values um, because I would be glad to find one or recommend one to you. Uh, people who believe in objective truth about men and women and families. The headmistress of the school said the following. No, we're fine because we don't see our job here to teach the objective truth. I just stopped because my first degree was philosophy and theology. And, you know, for me, as a, as a Christian, you know, it's, there, truth is a capital T for a reason. And I just said to her in front of the witness, Ex excuse me, would you mind just repeating what you said? Wow. Suddenly the temperature in the room dropped about 10 degrees. And she said, our job is not to teach objective truth. John, that's it. And, and this isn't politics. You can spin this into politics, but you're wrong. But it is the color of politics today. And right. the watershed moment for me as an American who chose America was the Kavanaugh hearings. Do you remember the Kavanaugh hearings, Justice yeah. Kavanaugh? Absolutely Two disgraceful what happened to him. Disgraceful. But if you understand this concept of truth, this watershed moment was when two senators on that uh, committee, one of whom, one of whom is potentially going to be the next vice president, said to Blasey Ford, um, I respect 
your truth. H hang on a second. What, what do you mean, your truth? Either you were gang raped by a 16-year-old young man who used drugs to rape you, or it didn't happen and he's an upstanding Christian judge. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, both. You can't have his truth and her truth. Either it happened or it didn't. That's and great. that's what I'm fighting for three hours a day on my radio show. And I think, in, in addition to very tight shot groups, that's what you and your team are fighting for too. That's right. And I like that you used the metaphor there of very tight shot groups. Let's actually make that a literal thing later. You and I burning it down on the range, Let's Dr. Do Gorka. Uh, I think that uh, given the last presidential election and currently in the state of Georgia, we are in some very important elections now. Uh, the month is January 2021. We made it through 2020, but it seems for my part and everyone I seem to talk to, our confidence in democratic elections is shaken to say the least. Now I'm looking back, I'm like, ha has our last real, true, fair election come and gone? Was this a fair election? Or is it just a bunch of spin? How would we know if this is actually, was there massive voter fraud? Was there some? Was there none? Or, you know, if, can you speak to that? Yeah, I, I, I'd love to, especially since we're, we're talking uh, right now, at, you know, in, in the week of the Georgia runoff election and the uh, Electoral College vote count uh, on January 6th. Look, um, I hear this from liberals who call in. I hear this from members of my family who aren't supporters of the man I work for, uh, President Trump. Well, you haven't, you know, there is no evidence. And the court said that you don't have any evidence. Wrong. We have thousands of affidavits signed at the risk of perjury and imprisonment. The courts have refused to hear them. OK, that's that's not the same as not having evidence. It means that a court doesn't want to mess with an election. And I understand that sensitivity. But at what risk to the future of the republic? Right. And here, here's all the evidence I need. And this, this is forget the thousands of affidavits, forget the, the video from Georgia of the, the suitcases of ballots being pulled out from under the table once the poll workers, once the poll watchers were escorted, escorted out of the room. Forget yeah. all that. All I need to know is the following. Are you telling me, are you a grown human being who's seriously telling me that a cognitively compromised machine politician of the last 47 years who literally hid in his basement for six months and couldn't hold a rally with more than 12 people, that that man got more votes than the first black American president you're smoking something, and it ain't tobacco if you believe that. That is all. I, you know that. I know that. I think the Democrats know. There's no way that a, that a senile old man in his basement got more votes than Barack Obama. And all we need to know is what happened on the night of election. Four battleground states stopped counting votes. When they stopped counting, the president was winning. When they started counting them again, oh, magically, yeah. Biden was the winner. How does that happen? So uh, the risk is great. I will say one thing. I, I, I live in the swamp. I know the depth and breadth of the swamp and how bad the swamp creatures are. But the fact that we have 140 uh, congressmen and women and we have a dozen senators who are prepared to raise objections this week, that's a, that's a big deal. And that's a good thing. Right. This is going to be one crazy week. So buckle up, my friends, and make sure you've got a lot of mag, a lot of magazines fully, fully, fully loaded. I might have some guns or magazines around here somewhere. <laughs> Hashtag, I'm surrounded by guns right now. And speaking of I, guns, let's say just the worst case comes about. And here in a few months, as Sleepy Joe already said, his first order of business would be, or in the first few, would be gun legislation. And all of a sudden, all of us are felons if we don't yeah. give up our guns. What do you think the American people would do? What would you recommend us do? And uh, what would that look like? 
Well, look, um, the, the, the meme that goes around is, oh, my gosh, not another boating accident. So there, there, there'd be a lot of sudden boating accidents with weapons being lost, I'm sure. Uh, the fact that people are printing T-shirts, that there are YouTubers going on their YouTube channels with T-shirts that say will not comply is a very interesting, interesting indication. Um, I, 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 look, I've said it on my show. I've said it at, at public events. I, I'm prepared to die for this kind. I'm prepared to go down in in a in a in a massive brass shell casings if I have to. I my my father was uh, was arrested and tortured by secret police officers. Had the mark of that torture on his body till the day he died. Uh, I was taught from a very young age that liberty is the most precious thing we have, and that we have it because we are made in the image of our creator. So I I, I don't have the right to tell other Americans to do, uh, what to do. Um, I have a, uh, my children are grown. Um, my wife understands my commitment to these values. But I, I think um, the spirit of 1776 is alive. And, and let me just be very clear, if you, if you know your history about 1776, most people have no idea, most Americans have no idea that less than 2% of the colonials actually fought the British. This wasn't, you know, it wasn't the, it wasn't the, the rising up of the colony. No, it was about 1.3% of the colonials actually fought. And that's how our nation was created. So it, it doesn't, you know, gun sales are through the We have broken every bloody gun sales record every month for the last, what, 18 months? And the idea that we are going to go peaceful, God forbid that there is violence. The, the, the greatest loss of life in this nation wasn't Vietnam, wasn't World War I, wasn't World War II, wasn't Korea. It was the Civil War with 600,000 Americans killed at the hand of their fellow Americans. I don't want to see a civil war, but I know one thing. I'm not going to go quietly into the night if they come for my civil rights. And the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms is a civil right, and it is the civil right. Right. That makes all the others possible, period. I think you're awesome. I feel like everyone out there, if you're watching or listening, you should just pause the video and just do a slow clap for <laughs> Dr. Sebastian. That was so good. I mean, I didn't know whether to salute while you were talking. I didn't know. All I knew is I wanted to carve me out some spot in that pile of brass, bro, because we can do this together, and I'm not a terrible person to have in a fight. We're, 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 uh, we're going to find out who the real, real warrior poets are, my friend. That's we're right. We're going to find out, and, and, and you're going to be at the front of that group. And the the boating stuff of like, oops, lost in a boating accident, that's <laughs> funny when it's it might happen, but now that we're getting close, I'm like... It's getting real. I'm not playing boating accident. Surprise. I right. found them all. I found a lot. I've got a ton. You may have zero, none, yes. just yes. none. You can't buy yes. them back because to buy them, you'd have to confiscate tax dollars from me to get a gun that never belonged yeah. to, to you in the first place. There's no such it, thing it, as a buyback. It's just a confiscation. It's, 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 one of the, yeah. it's one of the reasons I'm here. I mean, I, my yeah. parents escaped communist Hungary in the revolution, but I was born in the UK. And one of the reasons my whole family left the UK is because they took our rights away. They wow. banned handguns. Yep. They banned semi-automatic rifles. That's when my dad and I said, okay, we're out of here. So, you know, we're not going to let it happen here. You're absolutely, and let me say one very positive side. When you're having sheriffs in really Democrat states say they will not comply yeah. with illegal orders to disarm Americans, it's not just you and me. It's right. not just YouTubers and, and you know prior service guys or radio hosts. It's the guys with the badges Absolutely. and the guns who are saying, not on my watch. And that's really cool. And there's some cops out there that are ready to continue disgracing the oath they took and they would entertain such this. But for all of those, especially in, I'm in Georgia, you know, if like if my local SWAT team came to my house, it's to deputize me, not to take anything from it. They're all my friends, you know, if like right, they're buddies. Right, I like right. them. I know the they, sheriff. They want, they, want and you, they want you to help them. Right? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that. It's that of like, man, we got so many people behind the thin blue line that swore an oath to defend the constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I know them personally. I know them by name. I look in their eyes and I believe them when they tell me, John, we will not follow any unconstitutional, illegal gun seizure laws. And I believe them. There are some dirtbag cops that will do that, especially in lefty cities. But like you're in 
Georgia or Mississippi, all those cops, they used to just work normal jobs like you. They're, yeah. they're everyone else. They just are now working a different job. But and and no. let, let's, let's recognize here for a second. So I've spent decades working with the military. I still lecture for the Q course at the JFK school. I, I love all my operators. I spent two and a half years as a faculty member at Quantico. Um, and and, and we, we, we recognize what you guys have done and do, but it bears repeating. I have done a lot of work with Leos across the nation, state, federal, and local. And I, I do not know how these guys put on that badge and that Sam Brown when they realize one of the most dangerous things they can do is that traffic stop. So, you know, th th there are scumbags, but it is a fraction of a fraction. And God bless every man and woman who puts on that badge and protects us every single day. And my faith is in the majority of them saying, hell no, we're not disarming America. Dr. Gorka, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Guys, uh, you haven't seen the end of him. We're going to have him back on. I want to talk specifically about the strategic threat of China. And so I want the inside scoop of that, and that'll be in a future video. And also, we want to get you on our Warrior Poet Network, our streaming service, our app. And I want to really dive into that story about your escape from communism to the United States as a political refugee. On a personal note, YouTube will not show this to anyone because they know who uh, Dr. Gorka is. And when they see his name in the title, this video will immediately get thrashed. And the only way anyone's going to see it is if you share it. That's it. That's it. Uh, Big Tech hates you. Way to go, Sebastian Gorka. It probably means you're right. <laughs> Very good. Guys, that's it from us. Train hard, train smart, and stay free.